I am a big fan of setting the conditions to win. So what I just did and what I do every morning before I go out for my run is I get the things set up I'm gonna need for when I get back from my run to save time, energy, and just thought processes. Because as soon as I get back from my run, my daughter is ready to see me and play and start the day on the other side of this door. So I prep my strong greens, my strong reds, all my supplements, strong joints, strong multivitamin, strong omega. I have that all ready to go and laid out. I have my banana that I crush as soon as I walk in the door. I have my oats weighed out. So literally all I have to do is get the eggs out of the fridge and make my breakfast, consume my supplements. There's no thought process required. I can engage and be present with my daughter and I set the conditions to succeed for that next step of my day. So Remy and I are about to go for a run. I'm doing 11 miles this morning. Remy is gonna join me for the first two miles, but throughout this video, I'm gonna talk about setting the conditions throughout the day, your week, your, your entire life moving towards goals to increase your likelihood and chances of success and to win. Now we can't talk about setting the conditions without talking about forward thinking, backwards planning. And we can't talk about forward thinking, backwards planning without talking about habits. Now a habit is an action that is reinforced by frequency and consistency. The more frequency and consistency you apply to an action, the stronger that habit becomes, for good or bad. Running, it's a habit for me. I do it every morning. Another one of my habitual behaviors is forward thinking and backwards planning. And that concept, that skill, has transformed my life, truly and has shown me how to set the conditions. I've been running with people before. We're five, six miles into a 10 plus mile run and they say, I'm bonking. I didn't eat anything before. I have no fuel. I didn't sleep enough last night. I ate like crap yesterday. And often, but not always, the excuse, the response is, I didn't have time. And it's not that time itself was a limiting factor, but management of your time can be a limiting factor. And if you're not intentional, if you don't forward think and backwards plan, you will fail to set the conditions to succeed in whatever you're trying to do. Run is complete. 11 miles, 720 minute per mile pace, and one hour, 20 minutes, and 37 seconds. This is how I am actively applying these lessons in my life right now. Tomorrow I have a big 21 mile workout. It's a marathon paced workout. So I have a lot of three mile segments done at a 6.05 minute per mile pace that Jeff programmed. It's a big workout. It's gonna be a tough workout. So everything that I do today will set the conditions for tomorrow. I'm gonna prioritize my carbohydrate intake. I'm going to prioritize my hydration, my electrolyte consumption. I'm gonna try to stay off my legs. I'm gonna good night sleep tonight in preparation for tomorrow. I'm backwards planning to set the conditions to succeed at tomorrow's workout. That's the way that I apply it and I'm, I'm applying it right now. I do this every single day. 
don't knock it until you try it. We're gonna do one cup of egg whites in the pan. These are the oats that I prepped earlier. 40 grams of just old fashioned oats. And then I'm gonna throw in two whole eggs. We're gonna do two whole eggs. Ah, that'll do. And we're gonna mix it up and then top it with this hot sauce, which I truly believe is some of the best hot sauce I've ever found. Hoff's Wake Up Call Hot Sauce. It's from Frothy Monkey and it actually has coffee inside the hot sauce. Now, before we dive any deeper into this video, I wanna let you know it is sponsored by my good friends at Helix, who make premium mattresses customized to fit your unique needs and ship conveniently right to your door. Now, in our house, we have a Helix Midnight Lux on every single bed. And the way we came to the conclusion of getting the Midnight Lux is through the online quiz they offer on their website. And if you take the quiz, it's gonna help you find the best mattress for you. And it's gonna ask you a series of questions like, are you a side sleeper, a back sleeper, a stomach sleeper? Do you sleep by yourself or with someone else? Do you have pain while you sleep? Do you prefer a soft, medium, or hard mattress? And based off of the responses that you submit on this quiz, it's going to recommend the best mattress for you. And they actually just launched a new collection which is their highest end collection yet, and that is the Midnight Elite, which has cutting edge cooling technology. So after you take the quiz, find the best mattress for you and place your order, it's going to ship to your home in this small, tightly packed, convenient box that you can pull into your room, cut open, and let the mattress expand before your eyes. You get a 100 night sleep trial to make sure you love the mattress and it comes with a 10 year warranty. Helix also offers flexible payment programs and financing options. And their mattresses are fiberglass free. So if you are ready for a new mattress, go to helixsleep.com slash Nick Bear to get 20% off plus two free pillows. Now back to the video. So we have been in Nashville now for about two months and we are loving it. Finally getting settled in. One of the first big projects for me was finishing out this home office, which I'm about to show you. Very excited and happy with the way it turned out. And as you know, we have a VPN satellite office downtown Nashville. The second floor is the office space. That's 3,500 square feet. That's all built out now, which I can't wait to show you guys. And then we get access to the downstairs portion, hopefully before the end of the year, worst case scenario in January, and we're gonna build that out into a gym called the G1M Club. We actually are meeting with the designers next week to start drafting concepts and going over ideas, but my direction to the designers from the beginning was, I would love for this gym to be a cross between or a hybrid of an Equinox gym and an old motorcycle garage. Somewhere in the middle of those two things. Now I am a big believer that a space can facilitate creativity and just your ability to work. So I, I wanted to put a lot of intention behind this space. We got the beams up top here. Um, we got a TV sound bar, of course, a Longhorn skull. We got another skull over there in that corner. Acoustic guitar. Uh, electric guitar. Fun fact about me, when I was in high school, I was in a few bands. I was a guitar player. I was a bit of an emo kid. Still love emo music. Chair in the corner there, some shelves, this desk with floating shelves above, some artwork pieces. Howdy. And I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I spend a lot of time in here. I also spend a lot of time in the office downtown Nashville, but I wanted this to make me feel a certain way to influence my work. Are you gonna be a musician? Whoa, you're playing music. There you go, good job. Where are you trying, <laughs> where are you trying to go? Is there a reason you're trying to go behind the guitar? She was a skater girl, she said see you later. 
<laughs> you don't like that song? Kisses. <laughs> All right, Charlie. Let's see what you got. Whoa. Whoa. Good job. Good job. Absolutely, just beautiful. This just came out of the oven this morning. Get a close up of this right here. She's getting really, really good. And we've been sharing this journey on Instagram. A lot of people have been asking for the recipe. So in an upcoming video, we're gonna share the recipe in the process. But what we always do when a, a, a loaf is done is we gotta sample. This is fresh, this is as fresh as it gets. Fresh sourdough is such a treat. I'm about to eat this slice and I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna go to the gym, hit a training session. It smells good. All right. Mm, great crust. You didn't put butter on it. It doesn't need butter. Mm, I wish you guys could try this right now. <laughs> We're gonna get Steph to sample it. Let us know what she thinks about this loaf compared to her other loaves. Once we share this recipe with you guys, you won't buy bread from anywhere else. You're gonna be making it. Mmm, so good. Let me try. Your turn. Okay, so of your bread making so far, what is one thing that has made the biggest difference in your loaf that you want to share? Me too. That is good. I feel like as the loaves go on, I'm picking more up of that sourdough taste. Do you agree? I agree. I mean, these things are huge. This is just half of it right here. And to think I was proud of my first few that were like this tall. I would say the biggest thing is... Number one, patience. You cannot rush the process. I rushed the process. I mean, we used to cut into the loaves right when they were done. You have to be so patient and enjoy the process and you know let it sit overnight and know that it's gonna be worth it when you finally cut into it. But that's the biggest piece of advice. I was just moving way too quickly and rushing it and wanting to eat it quicker than it was ready. But this is pretty good. Pretty dang good. Give myself a pat on the back for that one. Today's strength training session is push and pull. So I'm hitting some chest and some back in the home garage here. Now obviously, at this point in my marathon prep, running and endurance training is the priority and my training is more specialized because there's a very specific goal. My strength training and hypertrophy still supports my fitness goals but like I said, it's not priority right now. But after this marathon's over, I will go back to incorporating a whole lot more strength into my just regular training programming. So as I've been talking about setting the conditions in order to set yourself up to succeed and win, I can't help but think about the similarities that come from cooking. And maybe this is just because I had one of Steph's delicious pieces of sourdough just before starting this workout. But you can take the same ingredients in the same directions from a recipe and you can have two different people try to create the same thing. And the outcome is going to be significantly different. I mean, you can go to a restaurant and eat something and try to recreate it and it's not the same. It's because of the conditions that are applied to achieve a result. It's the patience, it's the intentionality, it is the, the source and quality of ingredients that are selected, it's how it's treated, it's the environment, the atmosphere, the music, the scenery, the lighting, all of those conditions come together to create an experience from the food 
and the ecosystem in which the food is created. You have to set the conditions to set yourself up to get the outcome that you want and desire. Now, I just wrapped up this workout. I'm about to go inside and make some protein ice cream because guess what? We recently got the Ninja Creamy and I've been wanting this for a long time now and I'm about to test it for the first time. Let's go. So here she is, here is the Ninja Creamy. I've been seeing people post about this thing the last couple months, losing their minds, saying it makes it the best protein ice cream ever. So we're gonna give it a try. This has been freezing overnight and I'm about to put this in the machine, mix it up. I did one cup of this Fairlife 2% reduced fat milk a scoop and a half of the pumpkin spice BPN whey protein, about half a cup of Libby's pure pumpkin, one smashed up banana, and then some more pumpkin pie spice. So that was all mashed up, mixed up in the freezer overnight. So let's make it and try it. So I mixed it up, took it out after that first four minutes and it was still a little chunky. So I added a little bit more milk, just a little bit like a splash. Did a second spin, came out looking completely different. Beautiful, oh my gosh, can you see this? Wow, this looks, holy smokes. Holy smokes, that is so good. That is so good. Mmm, tastes like pumpkin pie, obviously, but the consistency. I'm going to have so much fun with so many variations with this thing. Wow, I'll put the, I'll put the calories and the macros on the screen here so you can see what's in this whole, I guess, pint. You wanna try it? Look. What do you think, is it good? Here, you try. Tops, you try it, Char. Yummy. Fish. Between dog slobber and baby slobber, this lens goes through a lot. So I'm about to wrap up this video right here but there is one last thing I wanted to talk about in regards to forward thinking and backwards planning. Now this seems like common sense and I will tell you that it can be for some people, but it isn't for a lot. And I really learned how to apply forward thinking and backwards planning as I was building a business because I had to project manage a lot and through more repetition and more consistency, forward thinking and backwards planning became a habit. And it's just something that I've incorporated into my life every single day over the last couple of years. And like I said in the beginning of this video, I've seen a huge ROI on applying that and incorporating it into my, my life. Now, it can be as simple and easy as preparing for a big workout. Or you can also apply it to what do you want your life to look like in 5, 10, 15, 20 years? That's forward thinking. That's being a visionary. And then backwards planning, what do I need to do from right now until then to make sure it happens? I'm looking forward and I'm planning backwards to make sure I get as close as possible to that objective. It's not a, a natural skill for everyone. And if it's not for you, force yourself to start doing it and make sure you do it often and make sure you do it consistently and it will become a habit. So thanks for tuning in to another video guys and we'll see you in the next one.